This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Thanks so much for supporting our channel. Hey friends, it's Benny from Conway Cosplay. Thank you for tuning in. Today I quickly wanted to show you how I 3D modeled and 3D printed all the armor parts for Svetlana's Banuk Trailblazer costume from Horizon Zero Dawn. And yep, this is actually part two of a video series that we started in, let me check, two years ago. Oh wow, we're really good at this. So to quickly recap, in the first video Svetlana showed you how she made all the fabric and fur parts of the costume and it was actually my job to make part two of the video and show you all of the armor parts I made. And then I got kind of distracted for two years. But never mind that, here we are again with the second video. And by the way, if you're interested in learning more about how to make your own 3D models and printing them for cosplay, Svetlana and I actually wrote a whole book about this topic, which you can find on kamuicosplay.com. We put all of our knowledge and techniques in there, so it will definitely help you get started. Thanks for checking it out, and now let's start with the video. So, to refresh your memory, these were the fabric parts of the costume Svetlana already made in her last video. If we take a look at the in-game reference though, you will see that we're still missing the shoulders, the leg armor, the headpiece and a few smaller parts in between. So better let's get started. As always, I began by taking a lot of reference images in the game's photo mode. I have to say that ever since video games started to implement this feature a couple of years ago, it made the life of a lot of cosplayers so much easier. To make a proper 3D model of the shoulder, for example, I just had to take a photo from the front, the side and the top. Then I imported these into the 3D modeling software Blender. If you're curious about this program yourself, just check out my beginner tutorial video. I put a link to it in the video description. Now I could start building up the shape of the shoulder, simply by following my reference images. First I would try to trace the shape from the front and then from the side and the top. This way I could reconstruct the silhouette of the shoulder pretty closely. It does take a little bit of time to get used to this process and it may not be super accurate, but for cosplay it's definitely good enough. Maybe it will comfort you to know that I also struggled a lot to learn all of this. Anyway, after I was satisfied with the general shape, I smoothed out the corners and cut out these little power plugs at the front. I didn't have much experience with Blender at the time I made this, but I think it turned out okay. Finally, I also added these little hooks to the inside of the shoulder. My plan was to slide these together and then pull a little metal wire through to hold them together. You'll see this in action a little bit later. Now my shoulder model was done, I was satisfied and I was ready to send this over to our 3D printers. If you're curious what we have, it's these two Zortrex M200 machines. Sadly, the shoulder was too large to be printed in one go, so I had to cut it into multiple smaller pieces, which you can see here. Then I printed all of the little puzzle parts in grey ABS plastic. I prefer to use ABS over PLA myself, since it sands a lot easier and I also find it a lot easier to glue together. Overall it took around 20 to 30 hours to print all of these parts, and that's per shoulder. This was partly though because I chose to print in the finest quality. I definitely prefer to let the machine print longer when that means I have to sand less afterwards. Next I had to remove all the support material. These can pop off and fly around pretty aggressively, so make sure to use clippers and eye protection. Now it was time for some sanding. For the first pass I like to use this little triangle sander. It will get rid of any remaining layer lines in lightning speed. I actually used all the support material from before and melted it in acetone to get this grey ABS slushy. This works perfectly as a glue for your 3D prints. Just use a toothpick, smear a bit of it onto your seams and press your pieces together. Then wait for a couple of minutes and bam, your pieces are welded into one. I also put a little bit of more on top to completely fill out the seam, but this also meant I had to sand it smooth again afterwards. Using these same steps again and again, I then worked my way through this shoulder puzzle, piece after piece, until all of it was put together. It's always great to see a 3D model that you've spent hours to make on the computer come to life like this right before your eyes. And here you can see the little hooks that I mentioned before. These little bumps here slide into these little holes here and then I pull a wire through to secure them. I know it looks stupid, but it works. Since ABS slushy does not sand super easily, I fill the remaining seams with this red spot putty. And this one actually sands a lot better. To get a super shiny finish, I applied a layer of grey spray primer next. Then I used a fine grit sanding sponge to really polish up the surface. Sadly, it was a bit hard to see which areas I already sanded down, since everything was now just grey. So I applied another layer of red spray primer on top. And this made the sanding process a lot easier. 
If you want, you can also repeat this step and go finer every time until you get a perfect mirror finish on your piece. But for me, one layer was enough. Next, it was time for painting. To begin, I applied a base layer of thick metallic spray paint. Then on top came a layer of hairspray. While hairspray is translucent, it actually works as a protective layer on top of the silver. So any color I put on top of this will only stick to the hairspray, but not the silver underneath. And this means when I apply my next layer of light grey airbrush color, I can just use a toothpick, dunk it a bit into water and rub off the white again around the edges without damaging the grey base underneath. This is a really nice effect if you want your 3D printed parts to look like they were made out of metal and then the paint on top have been scratched off a bit. After I was satisfied with my scratching, I painted a few details by hand and applied a layer of spray varnish to protect my work so far. Then I grabbed some brown oil color and began weathering everything to make it seem used and old. I think this way the armor just looks a lot more real and believable. A final coat of varnish to make it waterproof and bam, the shoulder was done. I think it turned out quite good. And yeah, I obviously had to do this all a second time for the other shoulder. As promised, here you can see the little wire that goes through the hooks. Hey, it works! And for the shoulder attachment, I actually made two more loops here, so that Svetlana could just pull through a leather strip and close it with velcro. One at the front and one at the back. This way the shoulders hold nice and steady in place all the time. And so far so good with the shoulders. I'm really proud how these turned out in the end, and I think they fit pretty nicely to the rest of the costume. So far so good, but now it's time for a little message from our sponsor NordVPN. As cosplayers are just fans of pop culture in general, Svetlana and I always try to stay up to date on the latest movies and TV shows. Sadly, a lot of what we can stream online still depends on the country we live in, and it's the same for us. Here in Germany, for example, a lot of the movies and TV shows we want to watch only become available around half a year after the US, and that's just super annoying. By using NordVPN, though, it's super easy to work around this little technical problem. For example, you can just open the NordVPN app on your computer or smartphone, choose whichever country you like, and with one click what's available over there becomes available over here. They actually have 60 different countries to choose from, so if there's a new anime you want to watch that's only available on Netflix Japan, boom, not a problem anymore. The same also works for region-locked video games, websites, news outlets, or you can even find a better deal for your subscription because it may be cheaper in another country. Plus it's safe, encrypted, works on pretty much every platform, and we use a VPN all the time ourselves, so I'm really happy NordVPN decided to sponsor this video. So just go to nordvpn.com slash cosplay for a special deal on your two-year plan plus four months extra for free. I also put a link in the video description. Thanks again for sponsoring this video and now let's continue. So back to the costume, next up was the leg armor. Compared to the shoulders, these pieces were relatively easy to model. Just like before, I took some screenshots in the game and imported them into Blender. Afterwards, I built up the model from the front and the side view. First the simple base shape, and then it got more detailed with every following step. 3D modeling is a fun process when you know what you're doing. But I do recognize that it's very annoying at the beginning when you spend most of your time not actually building things, but searching for even the most basic functions. It gets better over time though, so just stick to it. After the model was done and I was satisfied, I also added little loops to the back where Svetlana could slide through some leather belts for her attachment. Then I simply sent everything over to my printer again. And a couple of hours later, I again had to remove all the support material, sand the pieces with my triangle sander, added ABS slushy to glue it all together, and applied an additional layer of spray primer to make the surface even smoother. It's basically just the same steps as I showed you before with the shoulder pieces. So for the painting, it was again a layer of metallic spray paint first, a coat of hairspray next, and some off-white airbrush on top. And then it was time for some scratching and weathering again. While this process is a lot of fun on its own, you have to make sure not to overdo it. Sometimes I get a bit too carried away as well and just scratch over everything even when it doesn't really make any sense. The legs are usually the parts of a costume with the most weathering though, so it's still okay here. Then a layer of clear coat, some oil color that got wiped away again, a final coat of varnish, and the leg armor was done as well. Nice! And here, just as I showed you before, Svetlana sewed some strip of fabric that she pulled through the loops at the back for the attachment. She simply sewed some velcro to the back so she could close it. 
And with this, it was really easy for her to attach the finished leg armor. I know Svetlana would have probably pumped these out with EVA foam in a day or two, but the more I do 3D modeling, the faster I will get as well. So I'm okay with this. I also made a couple of smaller details as well, which I'm not going to show you the process of, because it's basically just more of the same. But it was these little plates for her arms and this little triangle necklace. Easy peasy. After finishing both the shoulder and the leg armor, it was finally time to move on to the headpiece. Again, I started out by taking a lot of reference images in-game and even reached out to Guerrilla Games if they could send me a couple of better reference images, which they actually did, so thank you again. Then I put it all into Blender again and started building everything from simple geometric shapes. And as you can see, I even got pretty far, I would say. However, this was back when I just got started with Blender and I thought this headpiece would be easy enough to make. By that time I used Blender for maybe 3 or 4 months and it turned out it just wasn't ready for it yet. I mean the original part was made by a super experienced 3D artist at Guerrilla Games, one of the biggest game companies in the world. And here I was just a couple of months after first opening Blender thinking I would just smash this thing out in a week or so. And it took me forever to get some progress. In fact I was so annoyed by my inexperience that I made an entirely different headpiece just for practice. And you can find this one in my getting started with Blender video. So did I actually make a how to get started with Blender video just to have an excuse to learn more about Blender myself? Probably. But the new headpiece actually turned out so nicely that I think we will just use this one for the final photo shoot later this summer. And da 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 da, here you can see all the fabric, fur and 3D printed armor pieces together. I really love making these collaboration projects with Svetlana and Horizon is just the perfect game for this. I'm also very much looking forward to seeing what the sequel will have in store for us in terms of costumes. Can't wait to make more of them. So will I ever finish the original headpiece? I honestly don't know. I think by the time I maybe get around to do it, the second game for Horizon will have come out and by that time I will probably much rather make something from the new game than finish the old stuff. So I guess time will tell. Anyway, I hope this video was still interesting to watch and you enjoyed getting a more in-depth look into our costume making process. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell or support our channel through Patreon. We really appreciate all the love you sent our way. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye. And here's a shout out to all the super sponsors on this week's episode over on Patreon, which is backslash cosplay, Darius Sloth, Jessica Burton, Lisa, Luisa Paris, Maloops and Nicarazo164. Thanks so much for your support on this week's episode and also to all the other Patreons who support our channel. Thanks so much for everything and see you next time again. Bye-bye.